Hello, Dr. Janine Krauss here. Today I'm going to talk about do carbohydrates cause you to have more gas? It's one of the common questions I get by my patients. And this is usually a question that leads up to do I have non-beneficial bacteria in my gut producing all this gas? So let's take a step back for a second. Do carbohydrates cause gas? Well, yes, of course, they absolutely can. Why? Because the beneficial bacteria that break down those carbohydrates produce methane, they produce carbon dioxide, and they produce hydrogen, among other things, while they're fermenting the carbohydrate, so while they're breaking it down. So in previous videos, I've talked a lot about how it's so important to chew your food. Why? Because the more you chew, the less gas that's going to be produced in the fermentation process by these beneficial bacteria. Why? Because if you give them a smaller piece to work with, they don't have to cause this big inflammatory bloaty process. And so that's one thing you can do. Now, in terms of gas and, and the formation of gas, the folks who are less gassy have more beneficial bacteria that can handle all of the carbohydrates that they eat. Those who have more gas have less of the proper beneficial bacteria to break down those carbohydrates. So how can you fix this? Well, one way you could go about it is to take probiotics. Now, you can't just go ahead and jump in and take probiotics on their own. You do want to give them a little bit of food, something called a prebiotic, which is basically fuel for them. It comes in the form of apples, green bananas, plantains, coconut flour, cooled potatoes. All of those different things can be used as fuel for your probiotics. So essentially, when you're taking a probiotic capsule, you want to pair it with a tablespoon or two of, say, let's go with a cooled potato. You've boiled the potato up for five to six minutes. You put it on an ice bath to stop that cooking process. Then take it out and then take that little tiny potato. Fingerling ones are great for this. You can take that with your probiotic. Now you've given your probiotic a little fuel and a little food for the trip. And so what you're doing there is training your body to be able to tolerate that beneficial bacteria and to be able to give it some fuel so that it can proliferate, basically set up its neighborhoods and families and whatever you want to call it in the digestive system. So then let's go back into why would we want to eat carbohydrates? Because they've kind of been demonized lately, you know, with paleo diets and whatnot. Well, Folks who are on the paleo diet, I've done it myself before on and off. And I'll be honest, yes, you do have less gas. Why? Because you're not consuming the carbohydrates that you would have normally consumed. And now the bacteria aren't dealing with carbohydrates. They're dealing with the proteins and fats. So yes, the paleo diet will definitely decrease your amount of gas, but what you're missing out on are some of the really great benefits that the bacteria can produce for you when they're fermenting your food. Why? Because beneficial bacteria can make something called butyrate. Butyrate can come from the breakdown of carbohydrates. Butyrate is fuel for that digestive system lining. It strengthens it up. So if you've ever heard anyone use the term leaky gut, intestinal, intestinal permeability, that separating of that intestinal lining, you can help to strengthen your digestive system and your immune system and everything else that goes along with the digestive system if you are eating a little bit of carbohydrates. Now, of course, you've got to choose your carbohydrates wisely. I'm not talking about going out and getting a box of ho-hos or ding-dongs. I'm talking about whole grains and things of that nature. So one of the big things I find with a lot of my patients when they're on the paleo diet, they're like, yes, sausage, yes, meat but we forget about the veggies and those veggies are there for a purpose. We need veggies. Why? Because those guys are great fuel for our digestive system lining. In future videos, I will talk a little bit more in depth on that. Since our topic is more on gas and bloating today, I wanted to basically kind of put it out there that carbs are not the enemy. It's just really how much and if your body's ready to be able to tolerate them. So I have a lot of people who can't digest veggies why they get on this healthy diet, this juice diet, they get the veggies and they're like, oh my gosh, I have so much gas because they don't have enough of the beneficial bacteria. And so if you're wanting to cut down on the amount of gas in your digestive system, but you do want to eat carbohydrates, the most important thing to do is get yourself started on some probiotics. Go slow. Start with about 5 billion organisms a day and take it with a little bit of prebiotic. 
And so that's that little bit of potato starch, a little bit of plantain, something of that nature. And so start with that and then train yourself to be able to digest carbohydrates better and you will have a lot less gas. And don't forget to chew. I'm Dr. Janine Kress. Thanks for watching.